everybody. This is um, me. For those of you just tuning in, I am currently reading um, my dad's manuscripts. They're cold reads, so I haven't read them. I mean, I've reviewed them. Um, theoretically, I've reviewed them. Um, today would not be one of those days. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, I'm like I said, cold reading, so I don't know necessarily what's what's being said. Although I am going to be quickly reading ahead and pausing if I come to certain areas, only because of <coughs> Twitch guidelines. So I just want to make sure that I'm providing safe viewing for everybody, and everyone's no one's feeling uncomfortable. All right. So um, without further ado. I'm reading chapter 7 of The Plague Wizards. Chapter 7. The boat pulled into the wharf at Gagapang. The river smelled here. It smelled of all the refuse the people dumped in the water. Melungtal wondered whether the famed Roth Rostonite spells that kept the city smelling fresh were just not equal to the task of keeping the water clear. The baby stopped crying as the boat touched the wharf. Malunko's first thought was, has the child cried itself to death then? He frowned. Not a kindly thought at all, Malunko. <clears throat> as we all thought. Time to go see what the kingdom of Ross then was like. No, not exactly. He had his first introduction to the kingdom of Ross then some days ago with every village and town having its own wizard or wizards. One had even shared a trip with him. Been two villages out on the river, between two villages on the river. He'd been shocked at, the, at first at how openly the little fellow declared his profession and boasted little about certain wonderful spells he'd come up with, though he'd been cagey about their exact workings. Malungtul began to get used to this after a bit. He himself, however, was still hiding his abilities. He had to expect the Hegelini would have agents out after him with orders to kill him when they found him. He portrayed himself as a merchant of limited means, traveling to Gagapang to claim an inheritance, which would enable him to support his business back in Seljashin. This gave him a reason for being somewhat secretive about his background and motives. <clears throat> he had to make sure that the comp competition did not get word of his movements. He pretended to be impressed at the minor workings the magician was so proud of. His mind insisted all the while that watchers were about to come up at their elbows. Malungtel, old bus budget, you're three days travel beyond the borders of Seljashin, well into Ross then, and the watchers won't be, won't be after mere magicians. They'll risk the causing of, interna of an international incident for runway high-ranking wizards, nothing less. Out on the river, s passing small towns, Malungtul had been aware of a constant feeling of uneasiness. With magic so open and freely practiced, or sorry, with what magic so open and freely practiced. Here in Gagapang itself, though, it seemed that almost every third person at least used some sort of magic. Though it seemed, sorry, sometimes the magic was as innocuous as driving rats out of grain storehouses. <clears throat> something Malungtul knew that his home, home city of Lunchmakor could have used. On the other hand, the nature of magic was such that it could and did have other darker uses. Practitioners of these forms would naturally be not so public. He pushed his way through the busy streets of Gagapeng. All the forms of magic that enforced the will of one person on another, those could possibly culminate in the rise of someone such as a blue blossom wizard. How much difference was there between offering a love charm to make a particular man or woman desire you, or pressing several people into your personal service? As far as the Watchers of Seljashin were concerned, it was a matter of pure luck that it wasn't always happening. Malungtul had wondered about that for some time, though he never wondered aloud. If something was only being prevented by pure luck, it ought to happen at least once, especially here in Rostan. He hadn't asked his trip. He hadn't asked on his trip though through Rothstan, 
partly not wanting to draw attention, but mostly, he had to admit, for not wanting to sound too much like too much of a stereotypical Saljashanite. He suspected that the wizards of Rostan were vigilant in their organizations to watch for such things, if only for their own good reputation. Now that he was here, he could see, att attempting to connect himself with one of the larger households, Slider, as part of his bargain, had given him some hints along the way. He would be best to try and to present himself to Pengua House as the household, which supplied the manner of, of services and advice to the royal house of Rostan. From what I've heard, Slider had said, all the magical houses are recruiting even more, more than they usually do. You might as well try for the top. With your training and, ability, and your ability, practically any of them will take you on. Gagapeng seemed full of people, rushing about from here to there, taking only an occasional glance at the Saljashanite, wandering more slowly among them. The languages of Saljashan and Rostan were similar enough that he could understand and make himself understood. The difficulty was getting anyone to stand still long enough to talk. Finally, though, a wall-eyed carpet seller paused long enough to answer Melanthal's query. You go over that way two streets, maybe three. Turn right and keep going. You'll see it eventually. Dirt, great wall around it, like a city in the city. They won't be staying, staying so high and mighty much longer. They did this thing that killed all the magicians in the city, killed them dead as rats in a rain barrel. Made a mistake though killed off their own magicians, too. Penga ho Pengua House isn't very popular in Gangapeng Peng these days. The carpet seller's directions were not very precise, Melanchol found. He followed them until he found himself in a blind in a blind street. The back wall of the premises, is bef the premises before him was battered and stained, missing some bricks, and two large cracks top to bottom showed that a part of the wall was close to falling away. It was in no way likely to be part of a wizardry household, nor any establishment with claims to quality. He worked his way back along the blind street to where it crossed the next street and paused. After a bit, he was able to get the attention of a man bound for the marketplace with a, long, with a pair of long jugs of wine lashed to a rack on each side of a racula. Can you tell me how to get to Pangua House? Pangua House? Who'd want to go to that ill-omened place? I would. I had business there. The man look, looked him up and down. Hmm. Well, if you're determined to go, I won't hold you back. Malenko was beginning to feel his temper fraying. Yes, but will you tell me how to get there? Oh, that! The wine cellar pointed with his weathered jaw along the street. Yes, two streets oh, that way, then turn left. Hard to miss there. even from a far distance. Peace go with you. Come on, or We've got wine to get to market. Malenko was about to ask a few more questions to be able to definitely identify Pengua House when he saw it, but decided not to. It seemed that the general run of opinion was less, was that the less one dealt with Pengua household, the better. Perhaps, so perhaps he ought to see what he could accomplish by himself. Following the wine cellar's vague directions, Malangtul him found himself inside of a large building, but a street m or more to the right of where he ought to be. With that guy building as a guide mark, he made his way through the surrounding streets and finally came up to a, to a street approximately, sorry, apparently jammed end to end with people. He tapped the man in front of him. Excuse me, sir, is that Pengua House? The other, a blocky man in well-cut clothing, frowned as he turned. Yes, it is. And you'll have to wait like the rest of us. Wait? The other the other gave him a superior glare. Of course, Ninny. They're all the rest of us are waiting for the chance to be taken to get taken on as wizards of Pengua House. Where on earth are you from that you don't know that? I'm from Seljashan, and I have an important message. Huh, of course you do. And I'll wager you think you're the first who's tried that one? You'll have to wait there behind me. You'll get your turn. There didn't seem to be many choices other than waiting 
for causing a riot among several classes of wizards and would be wizards he briefly considered that option but it was most likely he'd be discovered for the one who'd caused the trouble which would only add to his difficulties in getting a serious hearing so he waited about the middle of the afternoon a voice called out from from the still far off doorway of the house a voice the voice had, uh, had been magically augmented so that all, as to be heard down the street we have taken all in all the applicants we will take for the day you may return tomorrow if you wish no one is to loiter about the street overnight if it becomes necessary we will clear the street and you may not like the method we use go now the man in front of long till drew in a deep deep breath and let, then let it out and apparently the end of the rivalry for the queue rendered him slightly less unfriendly well that's it for the day but i have to get in he realized as he spoke that he sounded like a fool but he couldn't stop himself in time look fellow i assure you won't get in today that fellow wasn't joking about clearing the street i got caught in it myself the other day people were jammed in so tight behind me i could that i couldn't get out suddenly there was this terrible stench all the worst smells you could think of all mixed together there was one or two crushed in the rush to get out after that well until had a feeling it hadn't been so much people behind this fellow that had held him in place but it was also very likely that the people of tango house would use drastic measures to clear the street if need be he turned to go do you know of a place to stay somewhere near here the other chuckled yes but it's full up like everything near here else near here come along if you want and i'll show you but i doubt there will be floor space for you he moved briskly along giving out occasional comments such as the late grand master of Pengua house certainly caused a disas disaster for most of the wizardly households of gagapeng and though i'm not one to rejoice over another's tragedy it most certainly has provided the best opportunity I'm likely to find for a while. Or maybe a risk of connecting oneself with Penguin House, the way their reputation is just now. But I still say they're going to come back from it, most, and most likely the stronger. The inn, Af Mogus's wine barrel, was indeed full, with no room for anyone, with room for no one else, or with room for no one else, so Malungtul went off in search of other accommodation. He had noticed an interesting thing. The, the innkeeper's wine had a spell put on it to preserve it. Probably it wouldn't keep more good more than an extra day or so, but it was worthwhile to the innkeeper. It also meant that someone in the in the house full of house full of wizards was paying for his room with a wine preservation spell. This was something for Malungtul to keep in mind if he had a, if he had to stretch his straight stretch his stay very long he had quite a he had to wait he had to walk quite a distance before he found himself in an establishment that still had room for him in the course of that walk he saw many different styles of architecture he'd never paid attention much attention to these things, such things before but now he did for want of a better anything better to occupy his mind it was clear that the city of Kagapeng had developed and grown over many years. He went back to Pengua House again the next day, as early as he could manage without walking the streets in the dark. Despite this earlier start, he was far back enough in the already gathered queue that he suspected he wouldn't make it to the door today either. He held his place in line, though there was no telling how quickly or the recruitment process would go. And it might be possible that a large number large number would be would be similar summarily dismissed it was certain though that he wouldn't get in if he didn't stay having found out yesterday how the process went he had no need to talk to anyone in line leaving them alone leaving him alone with his thoughts perhaps it was his mood but most of the people around him seemed surly and unwilling to talk anyhow as it worked out he was able to work himself within 10 feet or so of the door doorway before a household servant appeared and announced the end of the day's quota. Malungtul couldn't help but feel discouraged at the waste of another half day. He went to the marketplace and found a boisterous place. Though he'd had no experience in hawking his magical skills, 
He was able to remove a few warts, cure a rash, and earn a few coins to supplant, supplant his fu him funds. A servant girl gave him a strange look when he claimed to be unable to make a love ch charm for, to cause her chosen man to fall in love with her. It seemed it was an everyday occurrence for wizards here in Rostham to interfere with people's lives. It wasn't that the matter was impossible. Rather, it was a case of, ha of his having fled a certain aspect of Seljashin, but not everything. Love charm charms and such were taught to the wizards of Seljashin, if only to demonstrate that the theoretical fear of the return of the Blue Blossom Wizard was more than theoretical. No, to be specific, he thought the risk of destroying Seljashin, perhaps the whole world, was too great in the course that his masters had set. Where was the sense in destroying Seljashin just to prevent the return of the Blue Blossom Wizard? On the other hand, though, the servant girl, serving girl would have paid him a nice, nice little fee. This was too close to the work of the Blue Blossom Wizard for his liking. He was not willing to interfere with people's wills just yet. Sad not grant he never found himself willing to do so. The next morning, instead of walking through the trees, he used his escape spell to bring him to the, back to the doorway of Pango House just at dawn. He came through, leaning against a wall, trying to hold his stomach down. It wasn't as bad as the first time, but the distance hadn't been as far as the first time either. Very shortly, he was sufficiently aware of the surroundings to realize he was a bare two feet from the doorway, in the middle of a small group of people, all of who, who seemed to be shouting at him angrily. Malunka wasn't sure what might have happened had the door not opened. The man, not a servant, stood in the doorway. I'm sorry, what might have happened then had the door not opened? The man pointed a finger at Malunko and spoke a little phrase. A so soft blue glow settled on the small crowd, though Malunko noticed that his own skin, on his own skin, the glow was ma mauve. You there, the man shouted. Come up here. You others, stand back and let him come. Stand back or I'll close the door for the day. That's better. Come on, you. I can't wait all day. Malunko forced his stomach into submission, came forward on unsteady feet. Sadat's toenails, are you drunk too? No, sorry, the spell's just a bit disorienting. The wizard looked at him. Hmm, disorienting, is it? Can I assume you know more than just one spell? Yes, I do. Malunko is starting to feel a bit better. I need to talk to somebody in here. I have a special message. Oh, really? Well, we'll see in a moment. Right now, one thing we have to do is make some tests. We know for certain that the other households would would like to slip someone inside Pangua. But, Malunko went quiet. No matter what he said, he was going to have them do their tests before anyone of importance was going to talk to him. He sat still while they set several spells on him. Spells that made his skin tingle. Spells that made it itch. Which made him feel extremely cold. Which made his hair stand on end. Finally, the young man stood in front of him again. All right. Unless one of the other households has produced some really fancy spells of concealment, you're most likely safe. You're from Seljashin, which is unusual. You don't seem to hate us Rossonites, just have a suspicion about us. Malunko listened to all, all this. All along, all the way along the journey, he'd known he would have to restrain his suspicion of Rostan if he was going to get a hearing, and apparently he had been at least partly successful. Of course, the fellow went on. Being a magician of your potential, you probably never did have much of a feeling for Seljashin. They kill your kind over there, don't they? So, just a few more tests then, to see what class you come into. Malunko decided it was best for him to go through the process of recruitment before insisting on speaking to someone regarding his real reason for coming. It seemed to him that the better he passed the test, the easier it would be to ask for and receive an interview with someone in power. So he went through the tests with attention to all safety precautions, but as rapidly as possible. After all the tests were done, the young man looked at Malunko with considerable respect. You are well qualified, aren't you? You'd be surprised at some of the people who want to join us. Barely enough magic to extinguish one weed at a time or make one plant grow a quarter of an inch, and they think we'll, we'll accept them immediately. But you... I think the Grand Master will want to speak to you. 
like I said, this was a short one. Um, I knew it was going to be. But uh, anyways, without further ado, I will talk to you all again soon and have a good night.